In this video, we are looking at the Grade 12 Computer Applications Technology, or CAT, Paper 1, the practical exam from November 2019. And this is video number one, so we are dealing with question one, the Microsoft Word question. I've opened up the document already. That's one Mahal that we're going to be dealing with, the word processing document. And we are going to start with 1.1.1. And we've got to find the text A Marvel, which will be on the first page. And we need to set the text outline, take note, it's the text outline to red. And the width of that outline must be 1.5. So let's go have a look. So there's our front page. There's the text that we want to change. So I'm going to select the text so that we apply it to that particular text. Make sure that we select the text. There we go. And we want to change the outline. Now, we're not changing the font. Ooh, there, that looks like something to do with outline. Text effects. There we go. So we want to change the outline. First of all, we want to change it to red. So let's change it to red. You can see that there's a red outline amongst the black fill. And we want to change the width of that outline. So if we go to the, or the weight, there we go to 1.5, which is one and a half points. So there we go. So that's what it would look like for number 1.1.1. Question 1.1.2. We've got a picture on page one. We must change it to scale the height to 60 and the width to 40. So the height to 60, width to 40. So let's go have a look. So there's the picture. So I'm going to click on the image so we can get to the picture format. And we want to change its size based on percentage. Now, those are centimeters. So I'm going to click on this little part here. So I get all the options. Now, it would be very tempting to just go, okay, let's go make it. There's a scale. The height must be 60 and the width must be 40. But you'll notice the moment I click away, it changes it to 60. And if I change that to 40, it changes this one back to 40. Now, that's a problem. So we're going to reset everything. And that's because we want to unlock the aspect ratio. So it doesn't keep it within that ratio. We want to change that ratio. So unlock it. And now we can change that to 60% and that to 40%. So there we go. If I click there, let's just double check. They said height. They said height must be 60 with 40. And that's what we've got there. So I click OK. And there's our image that is done. 1.1.3, we want to vertically, that means up and down, center the contents of the first page. Not horizontally, but vertically of just the first page. So let's go look. So we're going to select this page. I'm going to select the first page or the data that's on the first page. And then I'm going to come here to layout. And I want to come here to page setup. Now, when I come to page setup, I want to come here to the layout part if you haven't got it selected. And you'll see that it says page vertical alignment. And we wanted the selected section, which is just this page. And we want to change it to center and click OK. And you'll notice that it's now put all that in the middle of the front page. The other pages have been affected, but just this page has been centered vertically. So let's go look at 1.2. So we want to insert any automatic table of contents below the heading table of contents on the second page. So we're going to come here to table of contents over here and we're going to go to references because that's where the table of contents is. There's a table of contents. So we're just going to insert one of the table of contents. It did say anyone. So we can select anyone. So we're going to select this first one. And there we go. There's our table of contents. Going to do 1.3 now we need to modify heading one style so it looks something like that so we need to add a bullet wingdings character 118 and we need to display the left indent so make sure that that left indent is right against the edge that's probably going to be at zero and we must change all the heading one style so that they look like that okay so let's go do that we're going to go first go find our heading there it is there's our heading so i'm going to First of all, we can go see here at home. We can see that it's a heading style one. We're going to right click on the style and modify it. And so what we're going to do is we want to add a bullet. So I'm going to go format and go to numbering. There's no bullet, but it's not bullets for under numbering. So there's the bullet. And you'll see we've got it there already. But if we didn't have it, we could also define a new bullet and just go find the symbol. And we would know that it was character 118 you would go look under wingdings for 118 so it's already there so that's great but that's how you would find it if we need to so we're going to add that one yes please so that's the bullet we want so there we go then we want to change the indentation so that's going to be the paragraph i want to make sure that that left indentation is at zero 
so that it's right against the edge so it's right against the edge and it must automatically update all the other ones so that they also look like this so let's click OK boom so there we go it's got that little little symbol for the bullet it's right against the edge and if I scroll down oh, you can see all the others have been updated already to look like that as well so those are all heading style ones and they've all been updated so there we go that's 1.3 Okay, 1.4 we must find the paragraph that starts with what is widely and we're going to make it look like this this is a drop cap and you can see it's been dropped over four lines okay so let's go find that text oh there it is they've highlighted it for us so we can select the h and we're going to do a drop cap so make sure that it's selected there we go and we're going to insert and the drop cap is somewhere over there i think that's it there there we go we can add a drop cap and i'm going to go to the options and I want it to be dropped like that. Let's just double check what they wanted. Did they want it to be in the margin? No, it's not in the margin. You see that there's text underneath it. So if, if this text was over here, then you would know that it would be in the margin. But it's not in the margin. So it's not that one. It's definitely dropped like that. And we want it over three lines. Please go boom. And there we go. That looks like it is in that diagram. There we go. So that's 1.4. Let's go to 1.5. 1.5, change the hyperlink on the text Agra in the first paragraph so that it links to the one town document found in the exam folder. All right, there, there's the text already. It's already a hyperlink. It's going to a website, but I'm going to select that text. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to edit the hyperlink because it's already a hyperlink. And at the moment, it's going to that address, but I want to go to the current folder. There's the exam folder, and I want it to go to that particular document. That's the one that I want to please go to that particular one. Go OK. And if I move my mouse over there, you can see it's trying to go to that particular file in the exam folder. 1.6, add the text Indian poet to the footnote found with that particular text. So that means there's a, a footnote there already, so we must be careful. So there's already a footnote, but there's no text allocated to, to it. So it'd be very tempting to insert a footnote, but then it's going to override that one. We don't want to override it, we're going to change it. So there is the footnote, so we're going to just add the text there. You'll see if I put my mouse there, it says nothing. But if I come here and say Indian, Indian, Indian poet, and so now if I move to that text, I put my mouse over it, you see it says Indian Poet. So there we go. That's the footnote being changed. So it just changes it over there. 1.7, find the paragraph that starts with over 20,000 people and ends with 20th century. And we're going to apply a word processing feature to the paragraph to show that it does not split across a page. Okay, so let's go find it. Okay, so there's the paragraph. So that's I think that's the whole paragraph. And we don't want it to split over a page. So we're going to come here to the paragraph options. Now we're going to come here to line and page breaks. And we want to make sure we keep the lines together. I think if we do that one, it'll keep them all together. So if we do that, there we go. So it's not split over one, over two pages. It'll always keep those, that paragraph together. 1.8. We've got the text Paradise Garden and below the heading there. And this text already contains an index, but we must mark this text with a sub entry of multiples of four. So let's scroll down to find that text. There's Paradise Garden. It's already got an index on it. Um, if you want to check that, you can just click the hard show to see that there is. There we go. Paradise Garden. It's already got an entry on it. So we want to put a sub entry on it. So if I select it, and I'm going to come here to references and we're going to mark entry. There we go. It's already got a main entry. We're going to put a sub entry and this is going to be multiples of four. I think is what they wanted us to say. Let's put the number four multiples of four. So let's mark it. Boom. And so close. So now there should be two of them. There should be the sub entry and then the main entry. There we go. So that's correct. So then we know we've done it correctly. 1.9 we must find this image below and add the objects as shown so assume that we're going to be adding this arrow and then splendid workmanship next to it so let's go look for it let's go down let's try to find that image no no it's not there there it is okay so we're missing the arrow if you look at it we're missing this arrow and we're missing the splendid workmanship so it must look like that okay so that's a blank arrow there's nothing in it and splendid workmanship so let's go and have a look so we're going to insert a shape 
So let's go find a shape. We're going to insert that particular arrow. I think that's the one we want. So let's go and put in our arrow. Now you'll notice that the arrow is filled in. So I'm first of all going to make the shapes outline black just to be sure. And I'm going to make it full, no full. So there we go. Maybe make the line a bit thicker. I don't know if there is marks for that. But I'm just going to make it a bit thicker so we can see it. So there we go. We're making, making progress. And splendid workmanship is in text next to it. So we're going to put in a text box, maybe. There's a text box. So we're going to draw a text box. Let's draw one here. And put splendid, splendid, or splendid workmanship. Is that what they wanted? Splendid workmanship. Yes, that is. So we can do that and we can make that text a little bit bigger. So I'm going to come here and make the text. We'll just select the box and so it selects the whole text. Make it a bit bigger. There we go. And move that down a bit. And we don't want that block in that text box. So on the shape, I'm going to make the text box have no outline. So it looks like that. Okay, so that seems like that's what they want. They don't say anything about grouping it, but you could group all those images. So there we go. So there we go. I'm going to always remember to save regularly as well. Make sure that you're saving regularly. Okay, so I think that one's done. Now 1.10. Add the text adapted from that found at the end of the document. Or hide the text. So do not delete this text. Just hide it. So there's the text over there. We don't want to delete it. We want to hide it. Okay, so I'm going to come here to the font options. And see, oh, there's hidden. Let's see if that works. If I click hidden, yeah, it's gone. And if it's still there, we can use the hard seek just to show uh, it is still there, but we know that it's hidden. Okay, there we go. So that's that's as easy as it is. And then the last one for this question, 1.11, insert the text Taj Mahal in the footer of only the last page of the document. So we want Taj Mahal in only the last page of the, the document. So let's go to the last page. So this is the last page to make sure that it's got a different section. So we want it in the footer. Now if I come here to the footer, you'll see this is section two and this is still section two. So if I put it in there, it's going to be in all these sections. So I'm actually going to outside here, I'm going to insert a new section break over here. So because this is the last page, so let's insert a section break. So let's go to layout and we've got breaks we're going to insert a section break here boom so there's the section break okay so now if i click on the you see this is section two and this is section three aha so now when i come over here and i paste that particular text so i copied it so i pasted it taj mahal ah oh, it's in all of them ah oh, but we don't want it to be in the other so we want this one to be unlinked from the previous. So I'm going to unlink it. So if I look there, so if I click on this one, I'm going to delete this one. And if I go back down, do you see it stays in that one because it's not linked to the previous, but we deleted it from that one. So if we look at all these others, there's no Taj Mahal in any of the others because we deleted it from the first ones and we unlinked it. So how did I do that again? I added a section break, first of all. Went and went to layout, inserted a section break. Then I added the footer. I unlinked it and then I removed it from the previous section so that it's not, it's only in section three. And that I think is all of the questions. And that is question one. Let's move on to question two now. For the other videos from this exam paper as well as other videos that can help you go to our youtube channel click on that subscribe button leave a like leave a comment and look at the playlists and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way